Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are making Korean chicken pancakes with a non-spicy sauce. So if you guys want to know how to make this, please hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. Alright, we're going to start off with the sauce because I like to have that nicely marinating while we're making everything else so the flavors are all combined and blended and you just get a good flavor with all of that. So, we are going to start off with just one green onion. That's all you really need for this sauce. But um, just cut these up into tiny little pieces here just as you see in the screen that I am doing. And yes, this was in the freezer because I think it works well when you have anything that's going to be wilted anyways in some sort of stew or some uh, soups where the pancake makes itself where the sauce is right here. It's totally fine. But just throw that into a bowl. Mince up one large garlic. Mine happened to be pureed already, so it's, I'm just using what I think is about one garlic's worth. And then add a tablespoon of soy sauce and then one tablespoon of mirin. If you do not have mirin, you can use rice wine vinegar as well. That'll work just in place of that. And then we are going to add a teaspoon of sesame seeds, one teaspoon of Splenda, use sugar if you'd like in place of that instead, and one tablespoon of water. Go ahead and start mixing this up until it is nicely combined. And this is the non-spicy version. If you guys prefer to have a spicier version, go ahead and add a half a teaspoon to one teaspoon depending on your preference of red pepper flakes right into the same mix right here. If it's too thick for you, add a little bit of water until you get the consistency that you would like in your sauce. And then once you're done mixing this, then go ahead and set this aside until the pancakes are done. Now our pancakes are super easy to make as well. All we're gonna do is, well, I am using gluten-free all-purpose flour. You can use all-purpose, regular all-purpose flour if you'd like instead, but use three quarters of a cup of the all-purpose flour. And then we are gonna add two tablespoons of cornstarch. I am adding two tablespoons because cornstarch will make things fluffier, or not fluffy, thicker, I guess you could say thicker. And if you want it thicker like this, you'll see the pictures about how thick it is. But that's what two tablespoons of cornstarch will do for you. Once you've done that, go ahead and add your half a teaspoon of salt for some flavor. We want three quarters cup of cold water. Not your room temperature, make sure it's cold. And then we're gonna mix all the dry ingredients up until everything is nice and wet. Making sure that you do scrape the sides of the dry ingredients off of the bowl to make sure everything's all nicely combined. So what I'm gonna do here is add one egg into my mix. This is optional. You do not have to do this if you'd like to keep this completely vegan for yourself. Um, but I like to add it for more protein and just to make it a heartier meal for me and my family. But same thing, all you guys have to do here is just start mixing it all up and combining it until everything is nicely mixed. <laughs> How simple was that? All right, so next what we're gonna do is grab four green onions. Go ahead and clean those up, chop off the edges and whatever it is that you don't need. And I am so sorry for this part. I'm just going to go ahead and start apologizing right here because I was so into this I didn't even check the camera to see if you guys can see what it is that I am doing. Basically all I did was cut them into two inch pieces lengthwise and if the ends were too thick all I did was just cut those in half to make sure they were a little bit thinner and it would just cook easier in the whole entire mix. If you guys just watch the video, you see what I am doing, so you kind of see what it is that I'm talking about. What you guys are going to see is about three quarters cup of green onions. And all you have to do is just grab your onion, your white onion, your yellow onion, whichever it is that you prefer that you have on hand, and do the same thing. It's about three quarter cups of white onion as well. Onion here, so I'm just going to cut a couple of slices off. I am going to cut these in half, and any larger chunks I am also going to cut into smaller bite-sized pieces. I'm also cutting off a little bit of the ends of the root where it combines together just to get rid of that little piece. Now these are the vegetables that I had on hand and I chose to use. If you guys want to use anything else you can, bean sprouts, mushrooms, zucchini, squash, just cut them up into small pieces so that you know it can cook through on the pan. So whatever vegetables it is that you choose to use, go ahead and make sure you have one and a half to two cups, no more than that, in total combined. 
Now because my kids are not big on seafood, I chose to use chicken, so I just boiled up a half a cup of chicken just to chop up into small little pieces or dice it as you'll see in the video right here. If you guys want to use seafood, you can do so. If you want to take the meat out completely, you can also do so. If you don't want to boil chicken, if you have rotisserie chicken on hand, go ahead and use that in place of it so you don't have to do that extra step. But I just didn't have any, so this is why I ended up doing this because again, I wanted more protein in my pancakes. From this point, all we have to do is throw all of our vegetables and our chicken right into our pancake mix and just mix this all up. And this is it for the pancake mix. All right, so I'm gonna be using a smaller skillet, not one of those large pans for a whole family, but just a smaller, so it's like a personal size kind of pancake. And I'm adding a tablespoon of oil right into my. Make sure your skillet is hot. Put it on high heat, make sure this is hot. And once it's hot, go ahead and place, I'm just using a ladle, there's no actual measurement here in this part, but I'm just using a ladle again, and I'm going to scoop a little bit on there and then I'm going to scoop a little bit more just to kind of make it a rounder edge that you can see. I'll show you guys. I know it's too bright right here. It's just the way everything focused. Again, my, my fault. I was just getting into the pancake mix just to make sure I can hurry up and make this and eat this because it's really good when it's hot. Once I have everything nicely rounded, we are going to let this cook for four minutes on the first side right here and we're not going to touch it we're going to leave it alone on medium high heat so adjust your settings everybody's range is a little bit different and after the four minutes you're going to be able to well you'll see the edges brown a little bit just like you can kind of see in my video here and then just flip it and that's it right there and then we're going to sit here and let this cook for an additional three minutes I don't know if you guys caught that or not, but when I flipped it, you could see how thick the pancake was, and that was from the cornstarch that we added right into it. It would be a little bit thinner if you didn't add the cornstarch, but I'm, I just like it like that, so this is why I'm doing it this way. Now just press on it to make sure that you have the inside of your pancakes being fully cooked through. You can kind of see sometimes if you flip it too early, if you, you'll, if you press on it, you're gonna see like the pancake mix coming out a little bit. So you know you wanna cook it a little bit longer. I am talking too much, but here we go. So to add a little bit more flavor, what I like to do is add sesame oil right around the edge of the pancake mix and then kind of move it around and so you get a little bit of sesame, that nutty fit flavor into it. I think it's good that way. You guys can try it out. If you don't wanna do that, you can skip that. Once that sesame oil is on your pan and you have it cooking, cook it for another minute. Go ahead and flip it to make sure both sides are cooked. And once you've done that, all you have to do is put it on a cutting board, chop it into bite-sized pieces, and then serve it with your sauce. If you guys like this recipe, please make sure you hit that subscribe button, like it, and share it. And until the next meal, thank you for watching. Watch me cook.